welcome back to my channel it's me and guys today i am going to be doing something a little bit different over the next two weeks i have heard a lot of comments in my comment section asking how i do this how i do that and Today, I am going to be showing you guys, you know, all those over the next span of two weeks. So, yes, I will be uploading less, but, but today, I'm going to be showing you guys how I make my thumbnails. So, without further ado, you guys, you might learn some tips and tricks from me. Probably not, because you know what? That's okay. Let's just get into the video. Okay, you guys. So the app that I do use to make my thumbnails, I do, I do use Photoshop, you guys. Now, the only bad thing about Photoshop, it, it, is, it is a paid by month app now i definitely think this app is worth it i've just felt that my videos have gotten a lot better so once you have downloaded photoshop you will see this creative cloud thing now i did drag it onto my computer this is all the apps that we have and here is photoshop so we're going to go and open up Photoshop. Okay, now that Photoshop is open, this is where the real magic happens. You're going to want to go to Create New. You're going to want to go to Custom. And you might want to just pause here and take a little screenshot of this or something. And all that kind of stuff. You can also name your project. And then once you have everything ready, you can just press create. The first thing that I do is go onto Safari and either search up an Overlook Bay background or anything that I feel like. Sometimes I just even Google cute background and for the sake of it, I'm just going to use these lemons. Now, you don't have to download every single thing. You can copy your image minus out Google and press Command V or Control V depending on the desktop or computer that you use to paste it. Now obviously this is too small so you're going to want to press the arrow thing, the keys or move tool and you're going to want to press auto select. If now that I have finished I can either put press enter or or you can press the check mark. Now that we have done that obviously this is way too standing out so you're going to want to go to filter, blur, and this will blur it. Next, I'm going to want to drag on from my desktop a GFX. Now, I'm going to be showing, I may have already showed you guys because I don't know when this video is coming out. But, I probably have already showed you guys how to make a GFX. And, I'll be showing you guys how to make a solo GFX just like this very soon. So, now that you have your GFX on it, you're just going to want to position and scale where wherever you want your gfx to go once you're done you can press the check mark photoshop can be complicated at first but i promise you you will definitely be super happy with spending the time to take the time to make even better thumbnails now i'm going to want to add some text so i'm going to want to go to this t button it's a text tool and right here a text will pop up now when you first start your text will be 6 pt or 8 pt i can't remember but i like to make mine 72 pt or you can customize the amount of size it is to change the color of your text you're going to want to go up here and this is called the color picker for the text color. This will also t change your brush, your brush color. So now once I have the color ready and I have chosen my text, I there's a lot of text to use. Now I'll go here and put my text in. Sometimes you can also go and make different text so it can be different colors and different formats if you want to make your text 3d and the reason why you might want to do this is because it makes your text pop out and stand out for the rest this can be very good when making thumbnails because it attracts viewers what you're going to want to do is press the 3d button it'll load up the 3d studio 
and start customizing. Once you're done with it, go back to the layers, click this little arrow so it can hide things, and go to another layer. You can even enter the 3D Studio before clicking the check mark. If you don't like a layer on your thing anymore, let's just say I accidentally added some more text, and I didn't like my text anymore, I could click right here and press delete layer. You can also hide different layers if you don't want to focus on them. The last thing, try and keep your layers to a limited area because then your work surface looks much more cleaner. Let's just say I wanted to add one of my thumbnails to my thumbnail or I want to add a picture, but I'll show you that later. What you're gonna wanna do is hit it, copy it, and paste it. There's my thumbnail. Now please, please, please do not copy and paste thumbnails that are not your thumbnails. People work a lot the people work very hard to make their thumbnails look really, really nice, and you should never, ever steal someone's art. Since this is my thumbnail, I personally give myself the permission to use it, but please do not steal other people's art. You can also play around with the layers. If you put the layer below another layer, you can move it around like this. If you put it in front of the layer, now it covers up things. You can play around with the layers and see what you like best. Now I like to go on Google and search up a little heart overlay or something that I want. Make sure it's transparent. Copy the image and paste it. Now we have a beautiful heart overlay over here. Drag it down to just before your wallpaper and size it like this. You can also add a stroke to your text. Just click it, blending options, and it'll open up this page. Press stroke and go to the size and you will create a stroke. You can change the color as well. You can change the position too. If it's on the inside, it'll cover up it. But if it's on the outside, it'll make a really nice little stroke if you position it correctly. Fool around with the strokes and find what you like the best. Also fool around with the colors because any color can match you. Some colors are just better for other people. I personally just like right white because it makes it look so pretty. You can also add an inner shadow, which is a shadow right here. I tend to not use this option, but you can use it. And a drop shadow. Lots of people like to use the drop shadows because it's a really pretty way just to make it look so, so, so cute. Make the distance a little bit like that, and your text looks perfect. Once you do one thing to one text, always do it to the same so it looks more natural. It'll even keep how you did the other thing. So your thumbnail or your text turns out the perfect way you want it. If you want a picture from Twitter, like something from WonderWorks RB, copy it, paste it by using Command or Control V and go to Remove Background. If it's not in your quick actions, go to this search bar, go to Quick Actions, go to Remove Background, and go to Apply. This will automatically remove the background. Thank you guys so, 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 so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to like, subscribe to my channel because it's for you guys, that's how I make my Roblox thumbnails for my videos. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you like, subscribe to my channel because it's free. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Comment down below if this helped.